In this video, I'm turning a 20 hour painting into a five minute video, and hopefully I can give you some tips and maybe entertainment along the way. I am a watercolor artist in Spruce Grove, Alberta, and I'm teaching art in high school this year. So this video has been between transferring to online classes and staying up late, so I hope you enjoy it. First, I am ripping my watercolor paper to the size that I would like to use, and then I am taping it to this panel. That way the paper won't warp when I get it wet with the paint. And the final step is the reveal and peeling off that tape that I put on. This step comes with some lovely ASMR, if you like that. And the final product. You might recognize these two, and I guess it's time for me to show you how I got here. Rewind. First, I got my brushes and then my paint palette. And next, I started mixing the colors I needed. Oh, and couldn't forget the water. During the time lapse, I'm going to try and explain the steps the best I can, even though everything is going super speedy all around. It's just to fit such a massive painting, or I mean, detailed painting in such a short amount of time. The first step I did was transfer my sketch onto my watercolor paper and I could talk about how I do that in another video. We don't have time for that today. And then I wet the, paste, the spots of the face that I wanted to paint with water first, clean water. And then I dropped my skin colors into the water. And the reason that I wet the paper first is so that I would get soft edges and smooth blending. Because if you paint directly onto dry paper, it will give hard edges. So that's that outlined look and not the soft blending that I'm achieving here. I continue this process and I'm actually letting it dry between layers, which is something that you can't see, but that's important too, is that when I complete a layer, I let the face dry again before I re-wet and do added layers, more colors, darker values to get those subtle changes in skin. I actually use a lot of variation in color for skin. And those subtle shifts just help to bring the portrait to life and give shape to the face. Right around here you see me come in with a masking fluid pen and that helps to preserve the white areas that I don't want to get covered in paint. So the lightest spots on the teeth, in the eyes, and those shapes on Nicole's glasses. When it comes to the background, I'm just having fun. I am splashing, splattering, and having some controlled spontaneity with watercolor. I should have sped this next part up, but I wanted to include it because it is so neat and this is one of my favorite parts of watercolor. When I'm filling in her blazer and being very loose with it and adding those special effects that you can only get with watercolor, when I drop the water in, it does this cauliflowering is what it's called when it backwashes and creates those really neat kind of tree shapes or I guess that's called cauliflower shapes on her blouse. I use the same technique on the other blouse and just watch it. Isn't it the coolest thing? I don't know. It's like magic. I love that part. But next it is time to move on to the hair and adding details to the face. So when I'm doing the hair, I'm blocking in the main lights and darks and then I'm going over with my fine detail brush and adding the strokes in the same direction as the strands of hair. So you can get that detail peeking through. I like to flip back and forth between the subjects and the background so that they look like they're not cut and paste right on top of the background, they're part of it so it blends and flows together. Also I get bored doing one area so I like to hop around as you've probably noticed. Here is a little zoomed in detail shot of me adding some highlights to the eye. My masking fluid did not come off, I don't know why, maybe it expired mysteries happen, but instead I'm using a bright gel pen just to bring out those lights and get the reflection. It just makes people look alive when they have that final touch. Rachel Notley's necklace was so beautiful, I thought that I'd include me doing the details. I don't know if it has a special meaning, but I liked it. I realized that at 10,000% speed and 16,000% speed that this is not really a follow along for beginners type of video, but I hope that you're finding value in watching the process, hopefully feeling inspired wherever you are in your art journey, whether you are just picking up a paintbrush, 
thinking about it or if you have much more experience than me because I just started with watercolor about two and a half years ago. I took a Frank Haddock class. He is local to Edmonton and he's an amazing instructor. I have to plug that in here. And I am so proud of what we have available to us for arts in Alberta and I hope that we can sustain it because creating has so much value both personally and aesthetically, politically, in every way. Arts impact our lives. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of this event. I look forward to seeing the other presenters.